I'm here at Fixamia in London and I'm speaking to Graham Austin of Azitzi and Chris Pickles of BT. Now, the two of you just came off the panel uh, looking at LEI, Legal Entity Identifiers. And, you know, Chris, I'm, I'm a little nervous about the title of your session, um, calling it, uh, is LEI the, uh, the golden savior for market supervision? You know, and, and I always get a bit skeptical about people that present a magic bullet for the industry. You know, is LEI a magic bullet? No, but I think they're the, the critical building block for a solution. We know that during the economic crash, some of the situations happening were, just call it surprising, for example, that firms were trying to exit from high-risk positions and selling off those positions to other organizations that turned out to be part of their own business. They didn't know who they were trading with. So the idea of being able to identify what risk you've got with whom you've got it is going to be critical to the future of market regulation, never mind financial operations. So yeah, Graham, I mean, LEI is often presented as a major benefit uh, in, in the derivatives market. So what, you know, how will LEI be used? How, how will it benefit the derivatives market? Well, the first thing is identifying who your counterparties are, genuinely are. And then there are other opportunities along counterparty risk management. And the other big beneficiary are the regulators. It would be the first time as part of a, a slew of activity that systemic risk could be measured across the globe which is what the original purpose of this thing actually was. So, you know, the, uh, the man from the DTCC mentioned on the panel that uh, the LEI won't actually uh, satisfy the regulatory needs of organizations right at the moment. It's just a first step towards market supervision. So, and you know, we both know that banks never do anything that's nice to have. Um, they really need a mandate to push something like, like LEI. So Chris, you know, I'll start with you. Where, where is this mandate going to come from? The mandate's coming from two places. The most important one is that it's coming from the ministries of finance of the G20 countries. So it's truly a governmental level at that point. It's therefore also coming from the market regulators from each of those G20 countries. And they're buying into this process on the basis that spending the time means that they get the solution they need. They wouldn't be spending this kind of time and effort doing it unless they're going to be implementing LEIs as part of their regulatory reporting, their trade repository operations, etc. But, you know, the, the industry really doesn't have any clear uh, information on, on LEI. You know, what are the data, data uh, implications? You know, what, what's the notice from, from ESMA? You know, what, 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 why, don't, why doesn't the industry have this right now? Because not everything's been built yet is, is the simple short answer. Um, right now, the FSB has been working off a G20 mandate to build a global LEI system. Uh, that's a non-trivial requirement and is going to take, has been running for a year, year and a half and it's going to take another six to twelve months before it's fully, fully off the ground. Um, the problem is that right now lots of firms want to engage and start building but the answers to their questions can't be provided because there isn't even a board of directors fully formed yet to run a global LEI system, let alone uh, a spec to, uh, to code against.